So if you haven't watched my first video talking about how to declare your intention to sit and apply to sit for the exam, please do watch the video which I'll link somewhere up here. Just go and watch it and yeah, decide whether you want to take this exam. Uh, I've been talking about my experience in the first video, uh, how I feel about the exam and uh, like a very brief explanation of how challenging it was. So if you are up for it, do just go and apply and sit for the exam. Alright, let's get into it. Hey Freundin, uh, it's now 7.44am in Scotland. <laughs> and my name is Lyra, um, I'm a vet, uh, I'm Malaysian. Uh, I got qualified in National Taiwan University and um, did my master's in Scotland and currently I'm an RCVR certified vet which I'm going to start my job in next month very very soon. So uh, I've passed the exam this year, 2023, yeah, uh, and I did it within eight months uh, with a lot of help from the previous candidates and also um, the vet students here and also like a, a lot of mentors very 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 helpful senior veterinarians that have helped me through my exams so I thought I could share my journey and also share how I prepared for the exams and hopefully it will be helpful for everyone who is in who has interest to give this exam so let's get into it okay this is the table of contents which we'll be talking about um, this exam when will this exam be given and then what's the structure and what are the resources we have um, that is given by the RCVS for us to prepare for the exams and how I prepare for it and also how I would prepare it differently uh, if I were to do it this year. Alright, let's get into it. So when's the exam? Uh, if I'm not wrong, the latest guidance, the 2024 guidance, um, the examination guidance has been out. So remember, please do remember to check it out because uh, you have all the important details and the important information you need in that guidance. So read through that very, very carefully. What I say is just like the interpretation that I, that I read through the guidance, but you will need to have your own understanding and interpretation. Okay, then that's the first hand, first hand information that you read. According to the latest guidance, it will be during springtime, which is around like May, sorry, which is around like March, April, or May, I'm not sure, but this year in 2023, we did it during March and it spans across five days and we did it online. So what's the format of the theory exam, you might be asking. Uh, it like All of it will be in multiple choice questions, MCQ, and it will be done through an online examination invigilator application that you will have to kind of install it on your computer and uh, you will do it remotely, you will do it online. Like, I'm not sure if I can tell you about the, um, like the details of the examination app, but, um, but, but I think this is, the, this is the most used app. It's called Examplify. It's used more widely by universities to, uh, for, from, uh, for the professors kind of like design the exams for their students to take remotely, uh, especially during COVID, it, this Exemplify has been uh, widely used by a lot of universities. So like I said, it will be spent across um, a week, like five days, and like the first four days, you'll be doing the clinical questions, which will cover the three domains, uh, the companion animals, and uh, the companion animals, the production animals, farm animals, public health, and also equine. These are the three main domains that you'll be doing um, for your clinical questions. And for the fifth day, you'll be doing uh, the Code of Professional Conduct, where we call it COPC. It's an open book exam, so um, I, I didn't say you, didn't, you do need to prepare for it. You still need to prepare for it. You still need to study. You still need to read through, at least understand what is the, hand, the Code of Professional Conduct handbook is about. You might need some time to find answers in it. Uh, okay, so for the clinical questions, uh, you will have 350 questions in total testing you. Uh, so according to the, so I'll put a pie chart here. So according to the examination guidance, uh, according to the percentage that we've been talking about just now, this would be 
the like the proportion of the questions looking like uh, this is the pie chart that I'll be telling you. Fifty percent will be companion animals, which includes like dog, cats, exotic animals. Thirty percent will be like farm production, public health, and twenty percent will be like equine. So, and also I will be putting up、um, how many questions in total,、uh, like on the side of the pie <laughs> pie chart. Then you, so you have like an idea of how much you need to prepare for each domain. For the clinical questions,、uh, it will split across four days. Every day you will have two hours to complete one paper. Every paper is around like eighty-seven, eighty-eight quish- questions in total,、um, which means you need to read quite fast and decide your answer quite very quickly.、Uh, yeah, it needs a lot of practice, but don't worry about that. I'll be talking about the resources that you have in the next point, which will prepare you for it. Uh, and for the fifth day, which is the last day of the theory exam, you will do the COPC, which is known as the Code of Professional Conduct. It's an open book exam. You can download the COPC handbook, the PDF.、Uh, like you can do it online, on electronically on your computer, or even if you want to print it out as a physical form,、uh, so you can refer to it、uh, during the exam. <clears throat> There are like sixty questions for the COPC. And you are given two hours and fifteen minutes for the exam. It's a lot of time, to be honest. <laughs> But yeah, you still have to prepare for it. You have to, you still have to read through what a table of contents and where should you find the answers.、Uh, which chapter would you refer to if you are encountering some sort of、um, situation in real life? Yeah, <clears throat> it's good. It's very good. Yeah, it, it has been kind of like.、Um, Like a guidebook for me right now, as I practice as a clinical, like a clinical vet right now in the UK. So, what are the requirements for you to pass the exam? First and foremost, um, you must pass every single clinical domain. Remember this: you have to pass every single clinical domain in order to proceed to the practical exam, which is also known as the OSCEs. We call it, and if you didn't pass it. Uh, I'm sorry. You you might have to redo it again.、Yeah. This is this is the the most challenging part of the theory exam. And for the COPC,、um, it's it's better that you pass it what like once all、uh, during the theory exam. But don't worry if you didn't pass it because you are given that opportunity to receive it、uh, like during the OSCEs. So. Uh, it's more lenient for the COPC, but for the clinical exam main part, the 350 questions, you must really, really, really pass it. Okay.、Uh, what kind of system do they use to kind of decide? Oh, whether you pass or not? Or yeah.、Um, so for the RCBS, it's it, it's very interesting. They they won't give you the passing mark or say like. They won't tell you. Oh, you have to achieve like 50% or 60% to pass. Uh, all these questions, no, and they use a very, very interesting sis- marking system. It's called the standard setting system,、uh, or another name for it is called the Angoff system. It's right here.、Um, so they will kind of invite experts in the veterinary field to judge each item in the examination to see、uh, how difficult it is, and then what should be the cutoff marks for that particular item. And then they will get an average from all these experts' feedback, and then they will come up with, like the mark, the cutoff mark that everyone should achieve in order to pass that domain, in order to pass that exam. This is helpful in helping you to understand how this theory exam is actually carried out and being evaluated. So after you pay through your examination fees and、um, you have declared your intention to sit and apply to sit for the exam and everything. Uh, the RCBS will be sending will be sending you kind of like a, a list, not the real thing, a list <laughs> of the resources that you can use to prepare for exams.、Um, it's actually also stated in the examination guidance、uh, where you can look out for it.、Uh, I'll put the link down there somewhere so you can just directly go and search for it. It, it looks like this: the examination guidance. First, you'll be given the list of recommended book list. Uh, that you need to study for the exams. I think there's about, say, thirty, twenty, thirty. I can't remember. Like a series of textbooks 
across different clinical domains that you need, uh, that they think you need to read through or say study to prepare for the exams. Um, also, they will list out a few websites, official websites that are quite helpful um, to help you to prepare for a direct exam because uh, I think there are more UK conditions specified, UK environment specified compared to like uh, what's it like in our home country or other places. And then after you pay for your examination fees, you will have you gain access to the RCVS libraries. But um, I think you will have to pay £25 um, to get the access for six months. And if you need to, uh, you, you need any of the physical books to be delivered to you, you will need to pay for the shipping fees and, or like delivery fees or whatever. For the third, third thing, third and most important resource that you will have is uh, they will ask you to install the examination app application on your computer uh, but before that you have to see if your your computer model is like uh, does it comply is it compatible with the examination app if not uh, you might need a new computer or you might need to install it somewhere else um, they will help they will give you a lot of time to familiarize yourself with the examination app also at the same time you will be given mock questions MLCK mock questions under and 10 of the clinical questions like they are randomly just you know packed up together in the uh, in the mock questions and then uh, they will also give you the COPC questions 10 of the COPC questions just to give you a feeling of what would we look like in the real exam because uh, you'll be using that exact exact same examination application just if you'll be encountering different questions in it so uh, I've actually asked the RCBS will the mock questions come out during the exam. They didn't specify it, but uh, I would say just do it as much as you can. Be familiar with the format, be familiar with um, like uh, how, how the time is like being count down on everything, just to yeah give yourself more time to be prepared for it. So what does the mock question look like? Well, I will use a few a few examples from the examination guide and I will put it right here. You can pause the video and try to test yourself whether if you know the answer to it. So this is the, that was the first question and I hope you get it right. And this is the second question. And this is the third question. So I've given you examples um, from each of the domain, uh, the, the equine, the production animal and also the smallies. If you want to find out the right answer, you can check out the examination guide. It is within the examination guide. So go and read it. Alright, let's move on to our next part, which is how I actually prepared for the exam. Um, so a note for you guys, disclaimer, 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 please listen to this. What has helped me we will only be reference for you guys. You will have to devise your own study plan. You have to devise your own study schedule. Uh, what has worked for me might not work for you. So just, yeah, you can take it as a reference, but uh, I'm sure you will have your own way of study, which is probably better than mine. My way of study is, um, I would say, it is kind of like agile study. I don't have a specific way to do like a lot of notes or I will study every day or say I will study a specific textbook or I uh, uh, no I didn't I didn't did all of this I uh, I rely a lot of like re on repetition and I'm also a very visual and audio uh, aud audio thing audio learner yeah I, I like watching videos and also uh, I'm very good with images um, images which so I, I draw a lot and also I kind of repeat the drawing a lot in like flowchart or anything that has helped me to remember it better. Also I've made my own um, made my own kind of picture. I'll show you guys in a minute when I talk about a few things that has really helped me throughout the exam, how and how I've prepared for it. I'll list it I'll list the list of contents right here. Uh, there are main, mainly five points. First way that I really 
rely on a lot in preparing for exam is fat prep. Everyone, this is fat prep. Why I like fat prep because um, I think the questions they are quite, the format is very very similar to the RCVS. I know fat prep is like the application that you use to prepare for NAVLI, which is American Veterinary Exam board exam, but. Uh, I find it very helpful to prepare for the RCBS uh, because the format of the questions is very similar. It's long enough, so it will train you to read faster and decide and decide for your answers uh, faster. The uh, back prep will also give you feedback on the the questions or say the answers that you're given in, uh, which I think they are quite helpful in helping me to memorize uh, the important points uh, across different different clinical questions. Yeah, I did around two hundred questions per day, so I can, I just keep repeating it, do do it over again. I, I think for the first few tries, I only get like fifty marks, <laughs> less than fifty percent. I don't even know if I can pass the exam because I'm so I've been away from the veterinary knowledge for some time, and then I I've been taking around one to two months to really pick up on that, to pick up that the hunch or say pick up that. Feeling of being in a veterinary setting again. So, hundred to two hundred questions per day works for me. Um, it'll be a bit overwhelming, like overwhelming for some people, but that's how it works for me. Also, vet prep they will give you like a three month study or say or like a six month, six month study plan. Uh, if you start right now, I'll probably advise you to go for the three month study plan. <laughs> Take. Be more in intensive because uh, now it's almost so October, November, December, January, February. Oh, you actually can go for the six month plan if you want more lenient time. But for me, I'm a I'm an intensive learner. So I kind of refer to the three month plan and um, kind of do all the questions very intensively to yeah to help me prepare. Uh, prepare in this in that very short time because I think I signed up for the exam in November, <laughs> so that's less than four months for me to less no less than three months for me to prepare actually prepare for the exam because the exam was given uh, at the end of February so I only have like November December January February. yeah around four months I guess this is four months. Um, also I th- I like vet prep because they will give you. In the application, they have uh, they have a part where you can download all the vet notes, the the compound notes for each uh, each and every uh, different diseases. For example, they have a compound note on uh, canine Cushing, or say like feline hypo uh, sorry feline hyperthyroidism, uh, or say like Addison's. These are the common diseases that you will, that you will see uh, very uh, see in most companion animals. Or even like in farm animals or equine, like like equine say we will have colic, and how what's the etiology, and then what's the pathophysiology? How are we going to treat it? How are we going to follow up with it? What's the prognosis? This kind of very helpful notes, um, you you can find them all in vet prep. Uh, I talk about vet prep because I. I mainly use it for my exam, but Zuku Review is also another good app that you probably can use for uh, preparing for the RCVS. Uh, I can't vouch for any one of them because both have their pros. Like I said, vet pre- I use vet prep more, so I can talk about I talk can, I can talk more about vet prep because I think the style of the questions are quite similar to it. I did use a little bit of Zuku Review because one of my Taiwanese. Uh, his friends, he was also preparing for the Navli, which he has kindly lent me to use his Zuku uh, Zuku account. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so the second application that I've used is actually the Anki app. I'll put it right here. It looks like this. Um, it's actually a digital flashcard application, which was recommended by Dr. Ruth Ann Ribeiro. I'll put her YouTube channel right here. Please go and follow and uh, watch her video because she's a real inspiration and she has also been like a mentor for me during the RCVS, uh, my RCVS preparation. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruth. Once again, all the credit goes to her. Um, she has kindly provided her 
uh, Anki, Anki down in I think in her video link yeah down in her video link where you can download it and then you can revise on all the flashcards she has made for uh, while she was preparing for the RCBS exams why do I think Anki flashcards is important because it helps with uh, you keep repeating things that you might forget or say th- keep repeating on the knowledge points you need to remember as much as possible for example the horse language name for the uh, the, the horse neck is called like pole which I didn't know before I even came to the UK and I have to relearn everything um, if I studied through a book or say like study through the website it would be so scattered but oh my god Dr. Ruth's uh, Anki flashcards has helped me so immensely saved all of my time to you know tr- trying to screw through all the scattered information around uh, or on the internet so why I think using the flashcards is important this is the first point and the second point is according to this memory graph which I will put it right here if we like repeat the knowledge that we have learned within a certain period of time we will gain more understanding or say we will we'll be able to really consolidate the knowledge point and put it in our long-term memory uh, and we'll be able to recall it better uh, if we do like the memory repetition the study repetition within that certain period of time so um i don't know i i don't really know about the science behind it. you you can have a look at um yeah, the, the academic paper, which I will link down below about the memory graph. But our third point, which is seeing practice, seeing practice, seeing practice. This is the, uh, for me, I think this is the most important and most insightful way that has really helped me to prepare for my exams. Uh, I know this might be a bit challenging for some of the candidates because uh, of visa problems. So in my situation, I have... Uh, I've, like I said, I did my master's study in Scotland, so applied for the post-study work visa, which allow, allows me to stay, uh, legally stay in the UK for another two more years, uh, and also work uh, full-time or part-time. So uh, during my time of preparing for RCVS, I actually worked part-time in the healthcare field, and also um, using my, my, my some other time to do placements in different places. I went to uh, a few of the small animal practices. Uh, I, I went to universities to do my production animals and equine placements. Also, I've been to a first opinion um, practice for farm and also equine. That has really helped me to firstly understand the UK vet veterinary field. You understand the UK system or how they do things, or how uh, what is the different SOP here, like in the UK, because. You might find it very, very differently from your own home country, like in Malaysia, in Taiwan, or in India, or whatever place you come from. It, it it might be really different, and you you will give you some time to understand. Or how do the UK, how do the vets working in the UK actually think <laughs> when they try to resolve a problem? All right. And then the second one is to expand your network. I can't emphasize this more than enough because um, from getting no all these senior vets who have been working in the field for many many years they actually help you to um, prepare more focusedly in your exams uh, when i was doing my placements with the vets uh, in these different practices they would ask me like clinical questions they would test me just verbally on clinical questions uh, about oh what's it what what are the common diseases that you see during springtime in cows uh, in the uk this kind of questions, they they will ask me randomly <laughs> when I was do- when when I'm doing my seeing practices or say doing my placements with them. This has helped me so immensely by you know really consolidating what I've taken from uh, what I've re- read or say like prepared through the study materials that I have um, I've talked about just now. Uh, yeah, and also they will they will kind of recommend you to also other. See, uh, other veterinarians that will also help you to uh, they will also teach you or say like guide you through the preparation of your exams uh, other than senior vets I often make friends with a lot of vet students especially final year vet students uh, in the UK they have 
so really helpful. They've been really, really kind to share their notes, their study notes with me, and also some of the say some of their exam materials. Uh, I'm sorry I can't share it with you guys because this is um, like this is confidential and uh, without their consent, I cannot share. I, I cannot share it out. Okay, um, so. I would highly recommend everyone to get a seeing practice, especially in universities or even like just any first opinion practices, because you might meet some of the best students, be friends with them, and you will learn a lot from、um, how they actually prepare for their very intensive exams in their own universities. So the fourth way that I have really used to prepare for the exam is called the Feynman technique.、Uh, it it was devised by the American Nobel laureate. He was a physicist.、Uh, you know him from the Feynman formula, the fame that you learn in your physics during high school. I think I can't remember the Feynman name, but Richard Feynman has he has taught he has taught most of the students a technique that he used in understanding、uh, difficult concepts. So the Feynman technique、uh, speaks about、uh, when when you are trying to understand a knowledge point, or say you are trying to read. Uh, read on a certain chapter. You will try to read it, and then you try to explain it as if you're talking to a child. Explain it in very, very simple terms. That、uh, why is it why it is important? Because it will test your understanding as well as your process of that ability.、Um, so if you can you can explain a very complicated concept to a like say a five year old or nine year old kid, you. Probably has have already grasped the core of the knowledge point that you're studying. You can process it or say explain it to help someone understand understanding better. So in my case, I try to explain. Okay, what is the pathophysiology of Edison's to my family or、uh, to my family or say to my friends who are not who are not from the medical field or, or the veterinary field.、Uh, try to help them to understand. What is what is Edison's? What is the pathophysiology that has caused this kind of disease? And how are you going to treat it?、Uh, if they can understand, that means good. You understand it too. Yeah. Another.、Uh, okay. So coming to my last point, which is the supporting websites that I've been using.、Um, first, firstly, I've been joining the the Facebook group, which is called the RCBS Statutory Exam 2019. Uh, it looks like this right here, and I encourage all of you to join it.、Um, you can search all the previous questions asked by the previous candidates, and you might be able to find answers in it. So before you ask any questions, please watch my video, watch Ruth video, and also、um, kind of do your research within that group. Kind of control F and find your keyword. <laughs> you probably. Someone has probably asked a question before you, also, and probably got answers down there.、Um, yeah, do your research, and also don't hesitate to ask your questions、um, in the group because everyone's been really helpful, and we'll try our best to support each other in the group.、Uh, other websites、uh, I will highly recommend eClinPath. It's actually a website that has been compiled by the Cornell University.、Uh, they give very detailed information in. Clinical pathology or like pathology, especially for the、uh, for vets. The other one is MSD Vet Manual.、Uh, I can I can tell you how important this website was because it has helped me so immensely.、Um, say like in understanding understanding etiology,、um, the the pathophysiology, the clinical signs, the treatment plan. And also,、um, they they if they they have also like some mock questions that will test you after you have studied the material or say after you read through the material on the website. I think、um, it's a very good website for for starters. If you want to kind of have a feeling of oh, what's it like to really study for the RCBS exam? Looks like that. And yeah. Now coming to the more UK specific websites,、uh, especially I think for companion animals, you won't face too much of a hassle because generally everyone has the general same internal medicine problem: AMHA, Addison's, splenectomy, urinary incontinence. I'm just like giving all、oh, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism.、Um, 
These are the common diseases that happen all over the world, which is roughly the same. So I think um, a general general website will help you enough for that. But for UK specific stuff, like for example, public health, the UK specific production animals and eat uh, production animals, say like infection, infectious diseases, vaccination programs, you might need to refer to these websites. Uh, that I suggested here because I think that it has helped me immensely and also uh, it has helped me to understand oh how does the UK uh, public health work actually works in uh, works right here how I would prepare it differently if I were to do the exam in 2024 first and foremost I think mm, better we will have a study plan <laughs> uh, I like I said my, my my way of study is a bit chaotic it's very very agile and I will just try to grab every information I have and then using my own way to understand and memorize it. It might not work for everyone but um, yeah, I would highly suggest that you come up with a study plan so you can have very specific goals, what you want to achieve at the end of the month, how much you have achieved that and then uh, you can track your progress of how well you have been you have been um, like doing a revision for the exams. Uh, you can start with like the vet prep. If you sign up for vet prep, they probably would provide you with the three month plan or the six month plan, uh, the revision plan. And you're happy. If you're happy, you can go with that. If not, devise your own plan. Um, and the second one, I think the most important one, if you are able to go to do any seeing practices or even talk to someone who has been working in the UK as a vet for quite a long time, please prepare your self-assessment skills list um, when you were signing up for the exam or when you are applying to sit for the exam they probably provide you with a self-assessment skills list and you will have to think okay how well do you know that subject how well did you um, do you know about surgery or anything list out all the questions or list out all the all the techniques or the skills that you think you you still need to pick up also, you need to understand better or you need more help in it and go for your seeing practice, go for your placements and um, ask, ask the senior vets or ask the team, the veterinary team to help you to prepare for that. They, uh, don't worry, they will be very helpful, they, they will be very happy because you have identified the problems that you're facing and you have identified what, you, what skills you lack in. They probably can help you to, fa- to focus better in uh, preparing for the exam. For, in my case, I'm not very good with anesthesia. So I've listed out actually like a long list of I want to understand the different breathing systems. I want to understand how to connect like a full anesthesia circuit. And I want to understand how to um, control or say like also, uh, how to manage the anesthesia protocol across like different different type of species. So I've listed out all these questions before I went for placements and then I asked help from the veterinary nurses, the veterinary, um, the veterinary surgeons. They have been so helpful and they would keep reminding me, hey, have you done this skill or say, like, have you revised on it? We can test you on that skill today so you can, yeah, you can assess yourself on that. And last but not least, get a study partner or say like join the study group that I've been talking about which is the RCVS Dictatory Exam 2019. Try to find a study partner or say even get into a study group and study together. It will motivate you more or say like keep you accountable in studying for the exam. Uh, I was a bit lonely because um, I didn't really find any study partner and plus I was working I was working part-time. Uh, my life was quite hectic. <laughs> <laughs> and I was running around here and there, so uh, it's 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 been a bit like chaotic and also adventurous at the same time. But I would highly suggest everyone who, or whoever doing the RCVS, please go get a study partner or say get into a study group so you can study together, uh, which I think it will help immensely in preparing for our exam. So yeah, that wraps up for the whole video which I've been talking about when we'll be giving this exam, what are the structures, what are the resources, how did I prepare it for last year. Again, disclaimer, this works for me but it will not work for you so you probably have to have your own schedule, have your own plan to do it. Um, 
the last part I've been talk I've been talking about how I will prepare differently if I were to do it in 2024. So I hope this video has been helpful for all you guys. And please like, comment, and share this video to whoever needs it to prepare for RCBS exams. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you have more questions and you can contact me on Trilateral Vet, whether on Facebook or on Instagram. So subscribe to my channel if you are up for the next videos talking about RCBS exams, right? See you in the next one. Bye!